A lot of you probably already know my favorite gimbal of all time is this Feutech Scorp Pro. It's massive, it's made out of mostly metal, it's extreme overkill for the small cameras and lenses that I use on it because it can support a red camera. But there is a very specific reason that I use a larger gimbal and I've mentioned this in previous videos. This one in particular is just simple, easy to use, it never glitches out on me and it gets out of the way of me trying to record smooth video. I think that a lot of gimbals just get overly complex and a pain to use sometimes. So enter the all new Feutech Scorp 2 and the smaller Mini 2. Now one of the huge buzzwords of 2023 has to be the term AI or artificial intelligence and these gimbals also have AI but really all it is is subject tracking with a hand gesture. If you wanna call that artificial intelligence, then I guess we don't have to worry about robots taking over the world. Anyway, if you are looking for some budget-oriented, well-featured, well-performing gimbals, I think these two are a great place to start, so let's check them out. These gimbals come nicely packed with a bunch of accessories. This Mini 2 came with a carrying case, which is nice if you plan on traveling with your gimbal. In terms of design, there is a whole host of similarities, and in fact, if you have seen my review or if you own this Scorp Mini, the original version, or the plain old Scorp, these new gimbals will look and feel familiar. They both feature the same general shape, the grip layout, the buttons are almost identical, and the touchscreen is the same. Even the sizes are so close it's odd. The Scorp 2 is a little different in how you adjust the arms on each axis, and the arms are longer overall, giving you more clearance if you have a larger camera or lens. And with the Scorp 2, you also have the signature legs. That's what really makes the Scorp name makes sense, like this and this, and you don't have the little mini tripod on the bottom, you can place your gimbal on a flat surface like that and use it to track you or adjust whatever it is that you want to do with it. The menu interface is simple and straightforward on both gimbals, no significant changes since the original mini release over a year ago. There are squares, menu items to swipe in from, the side and the bottom and the top, and you really don't need a smartphone or an app to get these gimbals to work properly. There are little lines here in between the squares that show you where the gimbal is moving according to the toggle switch. There's built-in Bluetooth to control your camera so you can start and stop recording without any cables, and then this little blue circle on the front that houses the so-called AI unit. And this is simply a sensor that when it detects an OK sign starts to track your face. And it does it with quite good accuracy and quickness until you give it the sign to stop tracking. And this is nice. The whole thing is discrete, permanently affixed. It's something that I first saw on a Hohem gimbal, but this is a better incorporation of the tech. It turns on when the gimbal is on, it requires no cables or separate power, and it gives you a nice indicator light to tell you when it's working. So if you want to do shots like this where it looks like you have friends that come over and help you record your videos and you don't actually have friends who come over and help you record videos, well, you can with these gimbals. But gimbals really are primarily about getting that super smooth video. So I took these two gimbals out. I put my A6100 with the Sigma 18 to 50 on the small one and my A6700 with the Sony 16 to 55, a heavier setup on the larger gimbal. And I turned off all IBIS. I turned off all stabilization, didn't correct any of these shots and shot everything at 24 frames per second. Let's go. And you can see here that these gimbals perform similarly. They are smooth, but there is still some mini shake in the footage. This first shot is done at roughly 35 millimeters. The second is done at 20, and it's noticeably smoother following a subject sideways. This last shot is done at 50 millimeters, and this is by far the most difficult for both gimbals to keep steady. And this all goes back to the reason that I use this large and heavy Scorp Pro, because smooth video comes really from two factors, I would say. The weight of the camera setup and the torque and the power of the motors. Now, the heavier the camera setup, in theory, your footage should be smoother because you have more of that weight to absorb impacts. And obviously more torque on the motors means that even if you have a heavier setup or a lighter setup on a larger gimbal, there's plenty of headroom so that those small shakes are not an issue. They're just smoothed over. It's kind of like why a Cadillac rides so smoothly down the road. It weighs probably twice or three times as much as 
your Civic. But with a smaller gimbal, you just don't get as much weight or as much torque out of the motor, so if you do want a perfectly smooth shot, you either use your camera's IBIS in addition to the gimbal, or you stabilize the footage in post. In terms of overall performance, I think that these two gimbals are very similar to the competition. However, I would say that they are drastic and maybe not drastic, but certainly noticeable improvements over the original models. I mean, picking up this gimbal over the original Mini, you immediately notice the performance improvement. In addition, the build is just a little bit better with more grippy rubber areas to make holding onto and using this gimbal more pleasant. Is that enough for people with the original Mini to upgrade? Well, probably not. But if you are not currently a gimbal owner and you wanna start out, these two are some great options. And certainly on a budget, the small one is more than adequate for most APS-C lens and camera setups. And I'd say that the dual handle setup of these gimbals is definitely more stable than the single handle setup of something like the Zhiwin M3 or something like that. So this is a little bit more stable than just holding it with, you know, your hands like that. Uh, but that's just a preference thing. It does make for a larger footprint, but I think it's a worthwhile trade-off. And the other thing is with these gimbals, at least the smaller version, I think you do get a little bit more payload capacity. Speaking of which, we might as well do a little payload capacity test. So yeah, let's do that. All right, let's start with the Mini 2 first. And this is my heaviest camera setup, I think. Uh, FX30 with my Sigma 85 millimeter f1.4. I have a scale right here, it's reading three pounds, 0 0.2 ounces. So we're gonna call it three pounds. It's a pretty heavy, this is equivalent to a full frame setup with a pretty heavy lens on it. All right, so surprisingly, this thing is somewhat balancing. It's maxing out uh, this arm back here, pretty much maxing out this, and you can see the clearance is very tight, but it is there. Now let's turn it on. Okay, it's working. Look at that, three pounds. A little wobbly side to side, but it is holding it. Hasn't failed yet. I would not recommend this for long stints. Uh, I think that eventually the motors might overheat and shut down, but I mean, for a couple of minutes, three pounds, pretty good. Let's move on to the Scorp 2. All right, and let's power this one on, and I think we should be all right. The official payload capacity of this Scorp 2 is right around five and a half pounds, uh, so that should be plenty enough to support three pounds, and indeed, you can see there's plenty of clearance. I can move this camera even further back, and it is perfectly fine. I would be able to run around with this thing all day long and really not have to worry about motor torque and this gimbal failing on me. So. If you have a heavier setup, anything over, I'd say two pounds, this is probably the better gimbal out of the two to get. But if you have a super duper lightweight setup, then the small version is perfectly adequate as well. And you saw it supports up to three pounds as well. The battery life is great on these gimbals. Feutex say that they do about 13 hours or so. That is uh, officially the Scorp 2. But if you are using it with a heavier setup or doing fancy maneuvers, you can subtract a few hours from that total. Not sure about the Mini 2's capacity, but after using both, the battery levels were about similar. Granted that the Mini 2 did have a lighter setup on it. Another improvement with these gimbals is vertical shooting. If you're shooting content for Instagram, uh, YouTube shorts, whatever it is, you want a gimbal. Uh, the old version, the original mini, I never actually could figure out how to get it to vertical mode. And so I had to do this fancy vortex thing and hold it like this and it didn't work quite that well. Uh, but with this model, what you do is you unlock this bottom bracket right here, you slide off and release it. And then you actually remove this bracket altogether. There you are. And then you just take the camera that's already mounted with that L bracket and you slide it into place like this, you lock it and then you have to rebalance it. I mean, that is pretty easy as far as getting a vertical camera setup going, uh, much simpler than a lot of other gimbals out there. Now let's briefly talk about my complaints and areas where they could improve with these. There's really not that many, but I think that at this point in, we're almost in 2024, I think that these should come with some sort of 
quick release, at least Arca Swiss compatible, but ideally some sort of quick release mechanism to release your camera, I should say, from the gimbal, or, you know, swap out batteries, whatever it is, and mount it back on very quickly and easily. Fortunately, that's not the case with these. There's no quick release mechanism, so you are stuck with having to rebalance every single time you pull the camera off of the gimbal and you put it back on. Second thing is, this plate, so a lot of lenses, you guys probably notice, a lot of lenses extend further below the camera body, such as this 85 millimeter from Sigma. And what happens is the flat plate that you get with your gimbal is, I mean, it's long, so by the time you balance it, it's gonna be rubbing on the bottom of the lens, and so you have to use this little spacer. The problem with the spacer is that it requires two additional little bolts, and then you have to tighten the one in the middle. And really, the better solution to this is something that Zhi Win figured out with their gimbals a long time ago. They released it with the Crane Lab, or I don't know, the Crane 3 Lab, something crazy. And this is an accessory, this is a mounting plate that I've actually been using on even my Scorp Pro. And you can see it right here, all it is is that same plate, but that spacer is built in, so you can easily release it from your camera from the bottom. You use one mounting bolt, and you are all set instead of putting three of them on there. And I understand that you might not need this for every single camera and lens combo. And really the last thing that I'd like to see with the menu interface is just the ability to adjust your deadband and your pan follow speeds on a scale of let's say like one to 20 or even one to 50. And it just makes for fine tuning this gimbal to suit kind of your shooting style a lot easier. But all in all, I think that these are two great gimbals and between the two, the Scorp 2 is the better feeling and better performing gimbal, even though it is a little bit bigger and heavier, but it's not that much bigger and not that much heavier. It's also not that much more expensive. So I'd say that even if you have a smaller camera and lens, look at this one first. If you can afford it, go this route. So these two gimbals are launching today. The prices are roughly 269 USD and 369 USD. And if you wanna read more, check out specs, all that fun stuff, the link will be down in the description below. Also, Feitech is providing me with a discount code for you guys if you are interested in buying one of these things. So definitely check out that coupon code down below to save you guys some extra dollars. Uh, but let me know what your thoughts are about these two gimbals down in the comments section below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all of your comments and your likes and your support. Stay tuned for more. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.